Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So, wow, it has been a very long time since I have posted on my channel. I've got my tea here with me today. I am still recovering from my upper respiratory infection. So let's see how filming goes today. I first wanna say thank you so much for all of y'all that do support me, especially through a lot of stuff that has happened the past couple months with my health. I actually updated y'all over on my community tab if you've seen that. So if you want to get a little bit more updates on what's been going on with me, why I haven't been uploading, you could go check over on the community tab because it has been wild. Not only COVID, sinus infection, upper respiratory infection, losing my voice like four times in the past like two months. So I really wasn't able to film, but now I am back and I'm excited. I'm still struggling with like my cough and everything like that. So it should be interesting filming today, seeing how much I can get through talking a little bit lower than I normally do. With that being said, today we are going to be reacting to something that I meant to react to months ago but because of my health and everything like that I just haven't had a chance to so I'm coming back with this video so as y'all know WFAB is a top team that went from the company Monet over to the company iGenius and months ago I updated y'all letting y'all know that they actually started what they like to call their own reality show and they started it here on YouTube where they were uploading episodes now they have currently uploaded two episodes. They did state that they were supposed to upload the third one a while back, but for some reason they haven't yet. So I'm interested to see if that still comes out. I've got my tea. Get your tea, get your coffee, and let's get into it. Have you guys like started Ooh. learning how like support and resistance? Like yeah. how to mark your charts yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Does anybody have issues with it? Because like I've been taking like the notes, like I kind of want to show you guys this. Like the notes that I take, like exactly, it tells you how to look for like yeah. a strong support and resistance. Like, right there. And that is so like for example, I'll show you this page. I literally mark down like what higher highs and higher lows mean. So like here, if you have like a resistance line. Because it's higher than these. It's higher than like this high, mm -hmm. right? It came down to retest, but you only look for these patterns when it's on the support or resistance mm -hmm. lines, not like in the middle of the charts, right? Mm -hmm. So for the head and shoulders, it's supposed to be, the head is supposed to be above the resistance lines and the shoulders in, right? Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say that I feel 100% confident in teaching people just yet. Maybe the basics, like the basics 100% I know that I can teach people, but you know, it is very, um, it is, it, it's a lot of information. There's a lot of tricks, there's a lot of tips, there's a lot of like little things that you have to pay attention to. So um, at the current moment that I'm in right now, I've only really started to learn how to trade within the last few months. I can, I definitely feel comfortable and confident in teaching the basics to people, but anything advanced, not yet, but it will come soon. This is a big issue that I have with Motiva marketing companies. Clearly these people came from the company Monate where they were talking about hair care, skin care, wellness, and then they decided to join a company, iGenius, which was all about investing your money. It was all about crypto, which is something that you should probably learn how to do or know how to do before you become a rep for the company and then decide to sell this idea of investing your money and crypto to other people. Because this is people's real money and time on the line. So I feel like the main issue with WFAB joining over to iGenius is they chose to join an MLM revolved around people literally investing their own hard-earned money and they did this without truly understanding how to invest their own money themselves and in MLMs we actually see this a lot where they'll say oh well you know what we can learn together just join and we can do this together learn with me this is what the MLM is all about it's about learning together and I don't feel like this should be true if you're investing your hard-earned money into something you should go to someone that knows what they're doing you should go to that person for help. That's why a lot of people go to financial advisors who have education and background on investing and understanding what it is that they're doing instead of going to someone like this who isn't an expert at all. And this goes with every single MLM, whether it's an investing MLM, whether it's a fitness MLM, you should go to a professional, whether it's a makeup MLM, you should go to an actual makeup artist or someone who knows what they're doing, an expert, someone who has gone through schooling or some sort of certification certification process to learn to be able to teach other people how to do it themselves versus going to someone who joined and then they don't even know how to do it themselves but they're trying to get other people to also do it it doesn't make sense especially with something that is an investment mlm so daniela are you on the crypto challenge 
Yeah. Did you have Sarah? So no. Look at this. Hold on. Sarah, yeah, I saw that in the chat. Showed me. Oh, that's wild. Bro, yeah, she made five hundred dollars no. trading. No, it was all in one day. Only, it was in one day. She made five hundred dollars in one day. She literally joined this. Had no, she just would look at a chart and see like squiggly lines and wow. shit, and then she's showing me today from like everything that we're learning that she's yeah. like making money. That makes me so happy. And she said yeah. it was from the alerts too. Yeah. yeah. She alerts. Said it was from the alerts. Uh, like, so they're using this Sarah girl as an example. Like, oh, look at her. She made five hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred. Just because one person makes a little bit of money doesn't mean that every single person is going to be able to make it happen and they're trying to make it seem like oh well she doesn't know what she's doing she doesn't even know what these charts mean she was just investing in whatever and then hoping for the best that's not really something that should be promoted oh let's just guess let's just throw our money and hope and pray that we can make money in return because it's not going to happen for everybody people are going to end up losing a lot of money in the long run doing that that's a big question. I want to see where my heart wants to go with that. I feel like this mm -hmm. entire business has completely, like, you, like if you knew me two years ago, like, that's a different, like, I'm telling you, like, completely different mentally, spiritually, financially, in every single aspect, I'm a different woman. And it, I thank WFAB for that. I always say WFAB saved me. It saved me from a lot of things in my life. It saved me from the depression. It saved me from mediocrity. It saved me from living an unfulfilled life. Because there's nothing I've ever done in my life that's more fulfilling than being able to grow and being able to help others grow. And see it, like you see people come in here and just grow so much confidence, like get such a big, better picture of themselves, like start to see themselves more. You see people come in here and come from being shy and insecure and unhappy to like this glowing, vibrant person that's now not only elevating in their life, but like inspiring so many other people. You see people coming from working from, uh, sorry, living at home with their parents to moving out, like all these like, you see people go through these entire transformations just by association. And I think people don't realize that WFAB is not just network marketing. WFAB is not just a product. WFAB is not just a company. WFAB is a movement to empower people. That's what it's about. It's a movement to move and impact as many people as possible. And we're not stopping at network marketing. There's a lot more that we got planned. So with her saying that the entire business has changed her, WFAB saved her, it saved her from depression, it saved her from living an unfilling life. Now, I'm happy that she found something that works for her. But the issue with MLMs is that, yeah, it works for you. It's not gonna work for every single person that is under you. People are going to lose time, lose money, and actually become unfulfilled and depressed going through a company that's taking their time and their money. And also with that, this type of language, in my opinion, is very manipulative. This individual is trying to use this video and all of these individuals are trying to use this kind of reality show in order to revive their image and to get other people to join them. And by talking about the fact that, oh, it saved me from things like depression, they are hoping that saying that will impact people who are also struggling with maybe not having a purpose, maybe other people who are also depressed and getting them to join. I think this type of language is very manipulative and is really geared towards recruiting certain types of people. And this type of language allows for very vulnerable groups of people to be roped into a company that will most likely line the upline's pockets, aka her and everyone else in the upline, and not actually line their pockets. And this is why we see so many people leave MLMs worse than where they ever started. She then said that nothing Nothing has made her feel more fulfilled than seeing other people grow. You see shy people become more alive and confident. In my opinion, MLMs aren't the end all be all to being confident. Now, do I agree that being in an MLM can maybe make you test yourself with becoming more like extroverted? Yes, I believe this because MLMs make you do things like post on social media every day. They make you spend thousands of dollars to go to these events where you're meeting people and you're putting yourself out there a little bit more than maybe you would have before. But while you are joining a company to do that. There are other ways that you can do that. There are other ways that you can become more extroverted or try different things or become more confident and putting yourself out there than joining a multi-level marketing company where the FTC states that most people who join MLMs lose money, make no money, or go into debt. And you could do things like join a club or a sports team in your area. Say you like doing sports or you like playing volleyball, for example. I know my husband has done this where he has joined like a local adult volleyball 
volleyball team and he's done tournaments. That's ways for you to meet people. You can go out with coworkers if you get along with you, some of your coworkers. You can go to a gym where you can meet other people. You can meet someone at a coffee shop. Maybe you go to the same coffee shop every single day. You can meet people through social media. You could use Bumble BFF as a way to meet people, etc. There's so many different ways as an adult that you can meet people, that you can become more confident, that you can put yourself out there a little bit more. So there are ways to do that, to become more fulfilled and confident within yourself as an adult versus joining a company that will most likely make you lose money or go into debt per what the FTC says. So I feel like MLM reps like to make it seem as if MLMs are the end all be all, that that's the only way you can make money. That's the only way you can become confident. But it's not the truth. There are so many other ways that you can go about it than joining a company that's about investing money on your joining people who don't even know how to do it themselves. She then stated that WFAB is a movement to impact as many people as possible. My question is, when does the movement become something that positively impacts everyone involved? When does it become a movement that not only just helps the top 1%? When does it become a movement that doesn't manipulate and gaslight their downlines into doing what they want them to do? We have seen Zoom calls. We have analyzed these calls where that's what they do to their downline to get them to give them the result that they want, aka for them to make more money. So they need their downlines to recruit more, to work harder. So when it becomes a movement that is based on people under you working so that you can make more money, to me, that's not a movement that's going to impact every single person positively. It's going to impact the top line of people. It's going to impact the uplines, but it's not going to impact the people at the bottom. It's not going to impact every single person who joins that MLM and allow them to all have a positive outcome, in my opinion. And then lastly, she says that they are not going to be stopping at network marketing, which is something that I'd actually be happy to see. I would love to see these women, you know, start their own businesses or do their own things outside of, you know, multi-level marketing companies. And I will definitely wish them the best when it comes to seeking out those ventures. And I really hope that they do. I hope that they just decide to step out of network marketing and do things like that because I would be interested to see what they do. Yeah, I made a hundred bucks the other day and then I spent it on my lashes. The culture here really makes people feel safe. When I came in and I got exposed to this whole different world, like literally, it's a whole different world. You ever seen that show? What's it called? That show that is like, um, um, it's like an underground world with like this spooky alien thing or whatever. You know that show? Stranger Things. This is like the Stranger Things, except in a good way. Like instead of it's underground, it's upground. It just really goes to show like there's just so much out there in this world that people don't even know about, people don't even realize because they haven't put themselves out there. They haven't tried anything new. They haven't stepped out of their comfort zone. So when I got into WFAB, I had like, I, I was on a different team and um, I, I, I didn't have like that kind of support that I wanted. I didn't have the kind of proper training that I was looking for. And you know, I'm that kind of person that's like all in, die hard or don't try at all. When I found WFAB, like I, I, it really went to show like what proper guidance, what proper training, what culture, what um, um, getting around the right people can do for you and your business. Because I didn't have success for a whole year, a whole year of me just like throwing shit against the wall, trying to figure it out, trying to like, you know, my head was spinning in circles. And then when I joined WFAB, like all I was building, I literally went off. Like I built that momentum. I took off. I- like I'm living proof that when I came in, I used that training, I used that support, I used that mentorship, and I took off right away within my first month. Right? Like I started having massive success within my first month because I took advantage of it. I saw the opportunity, I saw what was on the table, and I just went. <laughs> I don't know why I use that sound, but you know what I'm saying. I just went. I just took it. I took what I took what was available. I took what was offered to me, and it works. It works. You know, it's it's. Probably the best thing that's ever happened to me, to be honest. So there's two main things that I want to talk about with what she said. So she said that there is so much out there that people don't realize because they don't put themselves out there. They don't step out of their comfort zones. They're always saying this. Every single person who's at the top of an MLM or sees somewhat of success in an MLM will say this. It makes me feel like all they want to do is blame everyone who doesn't see success in MLMs and tell them that it's because they didn't work hard enough. It's because they didn't go out of their comfort zone. It's because they didn't use the 
tools around them when most people do. Most people join MLMs, they put themselves out there, they get out of their comfort zone, they use the resources that their uplines give them, they do everything, they hop on all the team calls, they use every single pocket of time to work on the multi-level marketing company. But just because they do that doesn't automatically mean every single person is going to see success. They're just, they're not. That's not how MLMs work. Not every single person can see that success, even if they do the exact same thing that someone else did. And keep in mind, with this team, we watched it happen from their move from Monate to iGenius. We watched that the second their downline didn't do exactly what they wanted them to do and how they wanted them to do it and posted how they wanted to and recruited the amount of people that they wanted them to, that they were kicked out of of group chats, team pages. They were ostracized because they weren't doing exactly what the upline wanted them to do in the time they wanted them to do it and how they wanted them to do it. And in regards to you getting taken out of the group chats, it's the reason for that is because you are so hot and cold. You are hot and cold, okay? You're telling me you're all in and then you go and you are telling Daniela, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. First of all, you do know that's your downline, right? So again, leadership thrown out the window, okay? Um, and then, you know, you're telling her you don't know and this and this and that. And then people are showing me that you're doing crypto now or whatever. I don't even know what you're doing. And so it's very on and off. Like, I don't know where your head's at. And instead of talking to me and communicating with me and being honest with how you feel, you go and you tell your downline instead, right? So you know what happens. Like it, when people are hot and cold, they get, and that's exactly what happened. And and this is again so that you can be aware. I'm having a business conversation with you. This has nothing to do with our friendship, okay? <laughs> nothing. And I see you posting subliminals about this and that and that. Like, I know you're in your feelings. Trust me. I know it, it's not easy to take this on, but, I, but you, you fail to be, be aware of yourself and the things that you have done. Like, you, can you honestly tell me that you have been putting in massive work just like how Sabrina was doing? It has nothing to do with you being here at the beginning. You are not taking responsibility. What you're doing is you are acting on your rights. Like I have a right to be here because I did it with, at the beginning with Jasmine. You don't get recognized for what you did two years ago, babe. You get recognized what you do today. We've seen these group chats. We've seen these conversations where these uplines were saying, hey, you're not doing what I want you to do. So that's why you're kicked out. Even though you're a top leader, even though you're making me hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, I don't care. You're not this month doing what I want you to do. You're not seeing the amount of success I want you to see because it's not helping me. So I'm going to kick you out of this group chat. I'm going to kick you out of this team page. So again, we've seen this happen with the WFAB girls when they were in Monate, when they were moving to iGenius, that they teared apart people that were in their own team for not doing what they wanted them to do. So then she said, I have massive or I got massive progress in my first month because I took the opportunity and I ran with it and it worked. So she's trying to say that she joined a company. I believe she's talking about Monet. Like she joined Monet. It didn't work for her because she joined a different team. She left that team. She joined WFAB and she did amazing because they had the tools and resources that got her to the level of success that she's currently at. So here's where we see that they are trying to make it seem as if their team has something that nobody else has, that their team is the best and the only way to succeed in iGenius or in general with the MLM that they're in is to join their team because their team is the only team that has the resources, that joining their team is going to be the thing that gets you to hit that level of success. If this was the case, every single person that has ever joined them and tried would be at the top of the company. Every single person would be making a livable wage. But does this happen? No, it doesn't happen. So they shouldn't be, in my opinion, sitting here and trying to make people believe that if you join them, you're going to automatically be successful because that's not what we see. That's not what we've seen with them in, you know, Monate. It's not what we've seen with iGenius so far. Not everyone is going to get to the top. That's not how MLMs work. And I don't know how many times we have to say that, but they will continue to try and make it seem as if 
That is how it works, that by joining their team, by using their tools, everyone's gonna see success by working as hard as they want you to work, that you're gonna see success when in all actuality, that's that's not how it works, that's not reality. But if you are someone that doesn't know a lot about MLMs, you just follow these girls on social media, you'll be more likely to join because they're gonna believe everything that these people are saying. When the FTC has proven that that's not how it works, they have stated that most people who join MLMs lose money or make, make no money. Then we have seen studies like the John M. Taylor study, the AARP study, where we see statistics. We've seen companies prove time and time again. We've seen income disclosure statements prove time and time again that 99% of people do not make a livable wage, let alone even a couple of hundred dollars in the MLM. I think that there's time where I'm like doubting myself, where I'm like questioning things, where I call jobs, where I call somebody else on the team, and we talk about it. We, gotta, we talk, like, different people talk to just like, you, some, that's the whole point. If you were to trust me, I don't you were, but I know a lot of you guys are not entrepreneurs on your own. It's fucking hard. Yeah. It's so fucking hard because you go through the same emotions, but you're alone. Yeah. So when you're feeling like shit, who's gonna, who's there to give you a pep talk? Who's there to give you a better perspective? Who's there to tell you to keep going? No one. Yeah. You literally just fucking, you quit. Yeah. And so that's why most entrepreneurs fail. Yeah. That's why we have it so beautiful because we have each other. So when you're feeling like that, you need to talk about yeah. it. And, and get support. Get yeah. around the right people. Get around whatever. Because I promise you, everything that you are going to go through, we've already gone through, or yeah. somebody that yeah. has more success has already gone through. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even like a few weeks ago, we came to do your lashes, and uh, I was talking to her about something that I was going through, and you, you were just like, babe, I'm going through the same thing, and I was just like, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like, how? Like, I'm like, I'm like, 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 what do you mean? And she's just like, yeah, babe, like, I'm going through the exact same thing, I don't think that you're the only one, and here I am sitting like, I'm the only one, and yeah, this yeah. fucking one is going through this, can I do this? Like, am I gonna get out of it? Like, how like, and then when I talk to you, it makes me feel so much better. But yeah, if I was doing this, or kept my emotions to myself and then share it with somebody else yeah. questions, probably would've stopped. We get to really do life together, like, and it's not a joke, like, I don't know, it's hard to put words on things that you live. So here they were talking at the table and they were trying to make it seem as if, if you own your own business, you don't have any support, like nobody to talk to, nobody is there for you, you're on your own, you have no one to vent to, no one to lean on. Just because you own your own business doesn't mean that you're alone in life, that you're not gonna have anybody to lean on. You can lean on friends, business partners, family members, people that you know that are in the same industry, for example, social media, is something that comes to mind with this. If I'm ever struggling with something with social media, I can always reach out to other people who do social media. There's always going to be people that you can lean on. You don't have to be in a multi-level marketing company to have a group of people that you can lean on and that you can vent to and have support with. So I want people to know that. I think some people believe this because I've seen it before. I've seen a lot of people in MLM say things like this where they believe outside of the MLM they will have no support at all. But if you look around you there's more than likely someone there that can support you that you can lean on so i, I go through, it's hard to explain but we go through life together we grow together we we're not going to always agree uh you know we're going to experience some things we're going to go through stuff we're going to overcome them we're going to win we make some money like it's a lot of a lot of emotions a lot of experiences overall i'm just really grateful that i was able to manifest this team into my life um because i know that it's by surrounding yourself like pe with people like this that you're able to get to the next level in life because if you're around people that are negative that don't have goals that are not like-minded you will be the sixth one um and i understand how important it is to that on the, like you are literally the average of the five people you hang around with the most right and it's important to make sure that you are yourself 100 percent up like this is who i am and i work hard and i show up every single day therefore i think that i take a good part in this team too like you know we all have our part to take um because of how we show up how serious we are and how dedicated we are to our success and to the team's success i was exposed to it i saw the bigger picture i saw the vision i understood it and i was like wait this makes sense this is a people's industry this is the only industry guys i've, I've worked jobs <laughs> trust me i've worked many jobs and there's not one single job that allowed that pushed me to become a better person Whereas here, this is all we do. Like, we get together, we grind, we read books, we get on personal development calls, like we really work hard. And we have fun, like, and you know, sometimes the thing is, is that you wanna like talk about it, right? You wanna talk about how it's great, how it's amazing, but then it looks like you're showing off. But then you don't, you don't do it enough and then you're like, oh, but you know, it's not even true. It's not even real. So it's like, what do you want me to do at this point? When I talk about it too much, I'm showing off and I'm not talking about it enough, it's fake. So, you know, it's just like, the ones who get it, get it, the ones who don't, don't. You know, this is not meant to be for everybody, but if it's for you, well, be ready to be on for a hell of a ride because this is gonna change your life. And I really hope so, because it changed mine and I'm only getting started. So, keep watching. <laughs> 
Okay, so she said it's a people's industry. It's a people's industry because you need people to make money. This isn't an industry where you can just sell some products that you really love and go on your way and make loads of money. That's not what it's about. If you look at any MLM, the people at the top are the people who have recruited more people. The more people you recruit, the higher up you get in an MLM, in 99.9% of MLMs, that is how it works. So it's a people's industry because you need people to make money. People aren't out here making millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars off of just selling a product and never recruiting that one soul. And if there are people out there, let me know because I haven't seen it. I have not seen not one human out here making millions upon millions of dollars in an MLM with just selling a product. I haven't seen people making a livable wage just selling a product. In MLMs, you need to recruit. So it's definitely a people's industry because you need people to make money. You need people below you to do the same thing that you do so that you can have, for example, 100, 200, 500, 1,000 people doing the same thing so that you can make more money. Plus, I can tell you, on top of this, she said that it's a people's industry. This is the only thing that has made or pushed me to be a better person. There are plenty of jobs or things you can do out there or industries you can go in that can make you a better person that can push you to learn and to grow you can find a job like that if you wanted one you can find a business like that you don't have to join an MLM to be pushed to be a better person I thought that was kind of weird to state so let me know in the comments below do you have a job or have you been in an industry or a business that has pushed you to become a better person or push you to learn and to grow because I'd love to see the different ways that people have grown besides being in a multi-level marketing company. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How's your leg? Bro, you're never going to believe who texted me. Who texted you? Yes. No. No. Okay. What? I'll be right back. She said he has August. Like as if nothing happened. It's the audacity for me. I just can't, I just, what I'm like having a hard time understanding is like, how can you not see what you created here? Like, like she didn't make it about you. You know what I mean? It was about everyone. And I feel like, like the situation is just like, it's just clearly not clear to her what she's actually done and how many people that she's hurt and the people that she claimed to love for, for years, you know, and, and to just drag all of us. She has absolutely no idea clearly what she put everyone through. And us aside, like uh, us friends aside, imagine the people in our organization when we were in money who are struggling in their business now because of all the drama that's attached to it and, yeah. and the brand that we built. And it's just, you clearly don't understand how many people you've hurt in the situation at all. To love and care about me, you to love and care about my son, but you're willing to drag my whole reputation, my whole business, uh, which ultimately takes the food off my table, like you were saying. Like, that, like, some, like we could have never recovered from that. Thank God we did, but we could have not, you know? That was, that was something that a lot of people would have let drown them. Mm -hmm. um, because we like the things we went through being dragged being publicly humiliated having to explain ourselves in places we didn't have to just like move on and just yeah but anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some content with the girls hey, babe, okay fun. love you good. okay bye, bye. So this FaceTime call is so weird to me because clearly this FaceTime call is about the girl Kay that I have talked about in my previous WFAB videos where WFAB moved from Monet to iGenius. Now with this move from Monet to iGenius, if you were not here to see it, there was a person that exposed everything that was happening behind the scenes and she talked about the move. She exposed everything, the manipulation, the gaslighting, all of the crazy crap that was happening, all of the manipulation that the uplines did just in general, she showed a lot of behind the scene behind the scenes things that happened with WFAB when they were in Monet and when they were about to move to iGenius. So Kay actually exposed the move before the WFAB girls even had a chance to do it. So this is the person they're clearly talking about. It's pretty obvious that they're talking about this person. And based on what I seen, this person just exposed a lot of the truth. She exposed group chat messages. She exposed, you know, what the uplines were saying behind the scenes. She exposed why they 
they were moving, she exposed who they were joining when they joined iGenius and the shady background of that person. In my opinion, she exposed a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't have seen if it wasn't for her. And I feel like she didn't sit there and bully or do anything like that to them. She just exposed the truth. She said, here, this is who they're joining. This is the shady shit they're doing. This person K announced it before they got a chance to. And I think that's the thing that makes them the most frustrated about it is that someone else exposed their move for what it was versus them having the chance to come out and say that they were moving before they did. And then this person on the phone stated, oh, well, we could have never made it back from this. So based on what I have seen, and clearly I'm not behind the scenes, I don't know if the W Fab girls got bullied or attacked by, you know, anyone in the downline or, you know, through Monet itself. I don't know any of that. I am just a commentary creator who watched the W Fab team move from Monet to iGenius. I see the zoom calls i seen the group chats i seen how these people spoke to their downlines and spoke to the people under them even though they were making so much money because of them i watched them disrespect gaslight and manipulate hundreds of individuals so when the girl on the phone says what she says about the fact that oh we could have never made it back from this i think that this is a time they should have taken to reflect on their own behaviors on their zoom call that they did on their move on who they joined on the gaslight lighting they did on the manipulation they used on the people under them and I believe that the leaders of WFAB just truly needed to reflect on the things that they were doing the things that they were saying and how they were acting because how they went about this move and how they treated people was not okay and is not okay in my opinion and if they couldn't or can't recover from this move I believe it would have been based on their actions the only thing that this person K exposed was the truth based on what I seen again I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but based on what I seen Kay posting on her Instagram, it was all just the truth. It was literally screenshots. It's like, okay, this is what they said. This is who they're going to. It was the truth before the Monet, you know, W Fab girls got the chance to say it themselves. And I do believe that if this K person did not expose all of this behind the scenes stuff, that the topic probably wouldn't have gotten the amount of coverage it did. So I'm thankful that this person exposed everything because it showed the team for what it really was. And I don't think that the WFAB girls expected to get the type of response they got through social media itself. They probably assumed that no one would ever cover it, that commentary creators wouldn't really know about anything. But because K exposed everything and K actually decided to chat with with commentary creators about what was happening and share behind the scenes things. I think that they weren't really expecting that. So to me, I think that they should have just reflected on their own actions when it came to the move and how they just disrespected, gaslit, and manipulated their whole entire downline. But it doesn't seem as if that's what they're doing. They're just blaming this K-girl for everything that happened when they should be looking at themselves in the mirror. I feel like they're just trying to find someone to blame. Okay, what happened? Yeah, so she pretty just pretty much messaged her and said, "Hey, how's August?" Without even asking how she is. That's it. That's all she had to say after all of this. What? Yeah. The transition that we had um, recently, which was three months ago, um, it was really tough, and I I felt like I I know me, and I know that I have thick skin to a certain point, but seeing my girls go through something like that, something that they've never been through before, where they've been, they were attacked um, verbally through social media. It was like, kind of like bullying, I would say. Um, it hurt me a lot and I, I never knew that we would receive that much backlash and I understood that everybody was emotional about the breakup, I would say. Um, a lot of people use their emotions and not logic. And I, I feel like what we went through definitely built us up to where we're at today. And that's the reason why we are so much more confident. We are so much more bolder because we went through um, heartbreak. That was a very painful moment. I'm just really happy that we were able to just stay close 
while all of that was happening. So the person that just talked is the highest person in WFAB. So she said that her girls were attacked and bullied. Again, I don't agree with that. I don't think that anybody deserves to be attacked or to be bullied. Now, what needed to happen was people to show the truth, just show what was happening, show behind the scenes, showcase the Zoom call like the person K did, showcase the group chat messages, showcase, you know, all of those things. And WFAB needed to take accountability for the things that they did. The issue that I found is that they kind of never took accountability for their part in the transition. And I think that that's where a huge issue lies and why a lot of people are frustrated with them. A lot of people in their downline expressed that they were frustrated with them because they continue to blame others, bash others, and manipulate again and guess. Like, I don't know how many times I have to say that. Uh, even in their own Zoom call that they did telling their WFAB reps that they were moving, it was a horrible Zoom call in my opinion. You guys can go watch that video that I did. I actually did a collab with Isabella Lanter. If you guys know her, that's my girl. I did a collab with her when it comes to uh, the WFAB team call where they talked about the move. And that was a huge problem that they never took accountability for. I feel like if they did take accountability, I believe the reaction from other people would have been a lot differently all around when it comes to their even their own downline probably would have had a different reaction. Again, I don't believe in bullying someone or attacking anyone ever. Now, I do believe in sharing the truth, but not attacking people or bullying them. But I also think that they should have taken that accountability, but they just never did. Then, then this top rep said, I never knew we would receive that kind of backlash. A lot of people use their emotions and not logic. So again, we're back at the place where we're blaming other people. So here, I feel like they're even trying to gaslight them again. They're saying, oh, y'all acted on emotions. Y'all didn't act on logic. Well, we were attacked. We were bullied, et cetera, et cetera. So they want the girls that reacted the way they did to feel kind of like crazy, like they shouldn't have reacted like that. They shouldn't have felt betrayed in any way, that they're wrong for feeling feeling the way that they felt versus these people actually taking accountability and reaching out to people that they may have hurt. Again, I don't condone bullying or anything like that, but just based on what I've seen on social media, it just seemed like a lot of people uh, just felt betrayed, felt manipulated, felt like they were being attacked by WFAB leaders, and that's why they reacted the way that they did. We never even got a chance to really share our part of the experience with the world because we just stayed quiet because there was just so much. We Beyonce on the you know? Don't talk about nothing, don't respond to nothing. That's what we did because it was a lot, a lot of negative energy and it was really hard on a lot of us. And I, I know the world doesn't see that because we still show up, we still work, we still thrived, we still ranked, we still, we still put in work. And I was personally battling a lot of emotions. Like I called my therapist, I was like, girl, we need to talk. Like my anxiety level hasn't been that high since I went through my depression two years ago. As soon as that whole situation happened, as soon as the transition happened, it was like this. It, it felt like overnight it went from people loving me and supporting me and cheering me on to overnight people hating me, people saying that I'm a bad person and pe people talking poorly of me. And people have always talked poorly about me, but they didn't—they never knew me. It was online. It was the brand, the anti members, the brand ambassadors. They didn't know the real me, so it never really affected me because they don't—they don't know me. But some of these people really, or I thought at least that they really knew me. I thought they knew my heart. I thought they knew my intentions. There was people that like really like. Like I shared my heart with, I poured my heart into, I poured my soul into, and so it really hurt. It, it was really painful to to receive that from, from, from those people. So I definitely believe this person, Dre, when she says that it was hard on her. I think that ugh, anything that happens on social media is hard, and the backlash that they received on social media and from their prior team was probably not easy to deal with. But again, I do think that if these WFAB leaders did analyze their actions and they took accountability for the Zoom call, the things that they did behind the scenes, the way that they treated their downlines, that the backlash wouldn't have been as large as it maybe was. Instead, they sit here and they still blame other people for how they reacted to their actions. But at the same time, we have to look at the actions that these WFAB girls did take and it wasn't good. Good. Like they did hurt a lot of people. They did manipulate a lot of people. They did treat a lot of people like absolute crap. They took advantage of a lot of people. So it was understandable for people to feel frustrated after that or betrayed after that. My thing is like there was so much negativity created and mm -hmm. such a positive space that we took, you know, mm -hmm. W5 has created yeah. in, in these years and just 
all like crushed from all that yeah. negativity. Yeah. That's the first story and I called she Sabrina right me. away. I was like, what was happening? What is that? I just didn't like that she used the platform to promote hate. We were all shocked. She called me, we called Ashley, the three of us yeah. were on space. I'm like, girl, did you see that? And I was like, girl, yes, I did. It's also like a reflection of someone's true colors. Like you can make it all you want, but then as soon as you get triggered, you're gonna go on your stories to blah, 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 blah. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like I didn't know any, I didn't know her at all. But to watch you and watch you and watch you. And I almost got in a car accident. And everybody go <laughs> watching that. It's Cause so I was upset. It's also like a business and mm -hmm. there's people like with Daniela and us, me, you, that we were like in her downline. Like mm -hmm. we were like, yeah. we were looking up to you at, mm -hmm. at, to her at some point and now we see this and it's like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, and because of that, because she was like, a, you know, a leader and a big figure, like a lot of people just took that like as being the truth. Yeah. So yeah. we got, we received messages of us like having to explain what was going yeah. on to yeah. people. And it's like not even a, I have nothing to do with this situation. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's hard because I feel like once I love someone, I'm always gonna love them. So I, I'll always have love for her in my heart. But like that doesn't mean that it was okay because I know it hurt a lot of people. Yeah, it's getting emotional. Mm. Oh, I love you. Yeah, it really it affected. Because it triggered like it triggered it triggered so many things. It wasn't just us. Like you could have affected just us, but it wasn't just us. Even people that stayed, my girls that stayed in the company, yeah. they got fucked over because people were like, I don't want to associate myself with the yeah. drama that you guys are involved in, that yeah. you guys were involved in. Like it's not only affecting us, it's affecting a lot of other people. And that was that was really fucking hard. And at the end of the day, like you said, like like everything happens for a reason and it's like we were purging like you like you said we were purging we were literally purging the energies that weren't there for us and it showed and i understand that like all the action and, and that's how i see it it's like i'm not hate i'm not like mad at it because i see it as just she was in pain and everybody else that acted out was in pain but my thing is it's like if you're gonna leave w fab for anybody it's not specifically her but if you're gonna leave w fab just know that every single person who came into this team and actually gave their energy, actually like worked at this, they left with something. Whether it's their confidence, whether it's like the entrepreneurial spirit, whether it's like now they're thriving in whatever business they're doing. Everybody who touched and witnessed like what we do left better. So if you talk about our team, make sure you can say that. That's so weird to say that everyone left better. Everyone's life is just because they left. I don't believe that. I've seen a lot of people leave W Fab. A lot of people have left losing money, being in debt, wasting time and energy, being manipulated, being gaslit, going through a lot mentally, physically, financially. So it's weird to state this because they truly don't know if everyone left in a better place. They're just assuming that every single person's lives that they touch, that they recruit is just automatically better because of them. That's just so, to me, that's so weird to say. And also right here when they were all just chiming in on what happened, they're saying, a lot of like oh you know she was just hurt that's why she exposed everything it's a reflection of her true color she used her platform to spread hate so now it's like okay so k this person spreading the truth about what went on showing full-on screenshots screen recordings you know sharing the zoom call showing what these people have said from their own mouths is her spreading hate because they're talking about the girl that spoke out and showed behind the scenes scenes things that proved that wfab was treating their reps like crap she showed how she was ostracized just for not doing exactly what they wanted her to do she showed all of it and to me that's not hate that's just showing your experience and what happened and how people hurt you and manipulated everybody. And here we can really see that MLMs will nonstop teach people that anyone who speaks out is wrong, that anyone who speaks out is spreading hate. Anyone that speaks out is a hateful person that's going through something in their life and it's not about the team, it's not about the MLM, it's about them. And this is to hopefully help future people, you know, be deterred away from believing it. Like they don't want people to believe what Kay said. They don't want people to believe the truth because it came from their own mouths like everything that Kay shared came from their mouth it was actual you know voice recordings where we can hear them talking it was zoom calls where we watch them say things so it's like what about Kay sharing that spread hate so to me they're just trying to make it seem as if everyone else is wrong, they're right, and they're hoping that this helps deter their current reps from looking at the other side. They're hoping that the other reps that are in their downline will just believe what they're saying and be like, oh no, this person, yeah, it was on hate. Yeah, I'm not even gonna go look at what Kay said. And that's the reality of MLMs. They teach people that anyone who speaks out is wrong, anyone who speaks out is spreading hate, and all this does is deter people from looking at the other side of things. Make sure you put some respect on it, it affected me in different ways, I guess. I mean, I was a little hurt from the whole entire situation, especially because, I don't know, I feel like I had nothing to do with it, but but you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is. And you've got to just take it with a grain of salt and realize that business is always going to have its ups and downs. So, you know, I don't hold really anything against people. I mean, if that's the way that you want to react, if that's how you move, it is what it is, right? So I feel like 
it's a lesson learned. It, it was unfortunate. I feel extremely like, you know, bad about how everything kind of went about because that wasn't the intention at all. But I also feel like, you know, it, it's, it's people who know our intentions and people who understand what we're doing here then they would have not been upset. They would have not gotten affected. They wouldn't have like, you know, a switch and change in personality going from, oh, we love you. Thank you so much for your help to like, fuck you kind of thing. Like, it's like, if you, if you know the, the true intentions of what we are doing in this business, what WFAB is all about, then those things, you know, don't really matter. You know when I started getting apologies, when I went on live and I was like, when somebody changes jobs, yeah. do they get hate for changing a job? Yeah. Like, like that's what it is at the end of the day. You yeah. just change companies. Yeah. Yeah. When has anybody ever been hated for that? So nobody in WFAB got criticism because they changed companies. They got criticism for how they did it and how they treated their team. And they treated their team like complete crap. And you can go watch the Zoom call. You can go watch my Monate videos of the Monate move to iGenius. And you could see what came out of these people's own mouth. The things that they said and the way that they did things is the reason why people criticize them. The other thing that they were saying was, um, oh, people couldn't have gone one day loving us and the next day saying F you. I feel like this actually <laughs> happens a lot. This is what I would like to call your wake up moment in multi-level marketing companies. I even had this exact moment in my MLM. One situation, because I was in Beachbody, I was in Beachbody for two years, and one situation happened to me in my MLM that finally allowed me to look inward and really look at my MLM for what it was. And even though for years, I thought that this MLM was better than freaking sliced bread, one moment changed it all for me. One moment allowed me to see the truth, allowed me to look in at the MLM. It allowed me to see behind what was actually happening. So it is possible that in one moment, in one situation, in one scenario, people seen WFAB for what it really was. They seen the reps for what they really were. And I truly believe that if and when someone has been manipulated into acting a certain way and believing a certain thing, there will come a day where they'll wake up from that. And this is how so many people leave MLMs. You know, for years and years and years, they believe everything. They've been manipulated. They've been love bombed. They've been gaslit into believing every single thing that the MLM says. And then one situation changes their whole life, changes their whole mind on the company, allows them to research, allows them to look at the company for what it really is. And that's why a lot of people leave MLMs feeling ashamed, uh, leaving MLMs feeling guilty because for years they didn't realize what MLMs were all about. They didn't realize what was actually happening. And then the, the moment that they realize what's happening, they feel like, oh my God, why did I act that way? Why did I do those things? You know, why did I post that? Why did I believe what was actually happening? And that's why a lot of people leave MLMs and it takes them, you know, sometimes months and years to deprogram and to forgive themselves after leaving their MLM because they realize that they were once manipulated. They realize that, that everything they did was because they believed one certain thing. And now that they've seen the truth about that thing, they no longer believe it and they see the reality behind it. And I think that this happened to a lot of people in WFAB. I think that they believed everything WFAB said and they worked their butts off and they joined every group chat. They joined every team call. They did every single thing that these WFAB people told them to do. And then one Zoom call, one interaction changed the reality of the situation. It allowed them to see the truth. And again, I can say that I've been there in an MLM. I have felt those same feelings. I, you know, done that exact thing where I was like, holy crap, how did I miss it? And I feel like a lot of people in the MLM probably feel this exact same way where they went one moment loving the MLM, loving WFAB, loving everything about it to the next, they realized what was happening to them. And they realized the truth about MLMs and about this specific company and this specific team. I think this is much more common than these people probably know. Oh, I had a call because yeah. everything happened. You can answer questions and whatever. Why am I seeing people jump on the call that I haven't seen in the business in six months? I'm yeah. like, yo, like, where are people like, like, you're here for just the drama, bro. Yeah. Like, you girls, because you girls yeah. are really strong with all of the hate that we got, but at okay, the end, like, like we still yeah. decided to do something because you saw the bigger picture and we decided to all follow because we all saw it for yeah. ourselves, not because you said yeah. it, but because you were able to paint the vision yeah. so we could see it for ourselves and we decided to go with it no matter what yeah. for to help because you want more people to win. Because yeah. like yeah. you were saying, yeah. you were not the only one winning, but you were the only one walking on stage. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. All of us are going to walk on stage. Look, already within four or five months, three yeah. of us yeah. speaking it's and then so all of us walking yeah. on the stage. Yeah. So, and so many ranks. Remember when we first joined, it was like 18 yeah. ranks of back to back to back. Like I think what made me the most emotional was um, uh, seeing my girls hurt the most and 
mind <laughs> and seeing that they didn't deserve what they went through. I don't like thinking the worst of people because that's a very heavy energy. So I, I give the benefit of the doubt to a lot of people and I feel like that's the reason why. Um, it sucks. Sometimes you just let people in and they take advantage of that. <laughs> So the people under her took advantage of her. She didn't take advantage of them. That the people under her who lost money, lost time, took advantage of her, but she didn't take advantage of them. It's just so weird that right now they're sitting here and this whole team is acting like, hey, we're the victim. We are the people who got shit on. We are the people who got take advantage of. We, we were the ones that did everything right. When that is so far from the truth, that is so far from reality, that is so far from what I watched happen in these team calls and these group chats with this move. So it's just kind of wild to see their perspective and to see, what they think transpired versus what I personally witnessed transpire. Hi friends, thank you so much Samara for delivering that value. Get into all of our rank ups. Before I get into that though, I have um, some people that wanna say a few little words here. I'm gonna pass it over to uh, one of the, I'm gonna pass it over to one of the attendemic speakers, the one, the only, okay, social media queen, Sabrina, I can't pronounce the last name properly, but it's French, okay? So, la Sabrina, okay, please. Hello! I to talk about like how intentional we have to be for the next couple of days. Um, I just wanna put, um, again, the accent on the fact that there's only four days left um, to the first quarter of the year, to the 90 days. You guys know that we're currently running a 90 days run. This was meant for us to focus on our business for 90 days so we could have results within the next couple of months because you guys know that in network marketing, it's all about um, what you do right now is gonna impact your business in the next 30 to 90 days. How you end this first quarter so you can start with momentum Momentum. The next couple of months are going to be really good for you, but it, all, it requires you to work and be intentional. There's no other way around it. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. I'm excited, and I can't wait to see the ones that are going to be there in person to see you guys, and you're going to see me cry and all that good stuff. I love you, family, and I'll pass it over now to... Who are you passing it? Okay, so <laughs> right now, we need some... Because we are writing on the stage, Miss Jasmine Elizabeth. I don't know why I did all of that, but... Wow. Yeah, who bought it away has a 40... Was it 45 minutes? Uh, uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's no, 20. it was 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes. Oh, is it? I don't know. She, she, she doesn't even know, okay? It's she 30 minutes. has a 30-minute segment <laughs> on, on this event. 30 minutes. I don't think y'all understand 30-minute segment. She's the only IPA that has a 30-minute segment. Because she's not IPA for long, let me tell you. And it changed everything for me. Every year, I had success. Every year, my income grew. So this is not a joke, you guys. And this is the first network marketing company that has ever had a hybrid event like this. An influencer? Anybody. Anybody. Gets recognized on stage? Are you kidding me? My, the last company that I was in, do you know, I walked down on that stage in my last company, if you guys know that, I was, I was in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a shampoo company, right? I was at the top of the, comp the compensation plan. I went to um, a, a, the, a, a similar convention to like what we're doing here. And I was the only one who walked down that stage. And the only thing I thought about was, Wow, I just wish that my team was there with me on that stage. That's the first thing you told me when you got off stage. Mm. That's, it was me by myself. And all I kept thinking is like, damn, I cannot wait for my team to feel this type of emotion, this recognition, this excitement to walk down that stage. And I literally manifested it. Like, look at this. Whoever goes to this event live and you are a rank, you are walking down that stage. I am freaking mindful. I'm excited. I'm worried. The other day, I was, I was like, I know I've been writing in my journal for fucking two years. I am so happy and grateful now that I get to speak at the stage on, on GoPro. I am so happy and grateful now that I get to speak on stage at GoPro. I gotta wait till I'm some kind of millionaire till I get to go on that freaking stage. And look at God. Look at you. Look at the universe. Look at Source. Right? Giving me that opportunity. To get that picture clear in your head because you know that success is whoever is able to convince their mind of a reality that is not currently here. Whoever can convince their mind, whoever can paint that picture better. How much better would you be able to paint that picture if you were able to walk on Eric Worre's stage, bro? Who cares about walking across the stupid stage? I'm sorry, but that is just, I can't. That is just so wild to me. I don't have much to say about that. So I'm gonna skip through because they continue to just talk on this team call making, in my opinion, just no sense. So let's see what their next episode is supposed to be about because that's what I wanna see, but they still haven't uploaded it yet. But let's look at this little preview because it's about us, people. It's about us. Ooh. <laughs> people hate when they don't understand. People 
hate what they all did. I love that you said women because I don't know any men that are on these anti MLM videos. It's a women bashing motherfucking circle. Okay, anybody that has time to hate doesn't have a fucking life. Hey, thank you for promoting the brand for free. <laughs> Haters. Well, we all need them because, I mean, they are our brand ambassadors. It's honestly brought us a lot of business. So, we love the viewers. I say thank you for the work that you do for us, okay? Literally, brand ambassadors that work for free. I am so happy to be a brand ambassador for WFAB. But that is it, y'all. That is the team call. That is what's supposed to be the next like reality show episode, but they never uploaded it. Like I said, it has taken me months to get to this because I've spent literally my past couple months uh, feeling like I'm dying because I've been sick. I've been in bed for weeks on weeks besides working my job. Besides that, I've been in bed after and before my job, but they still haven't posted it. So I'm like, where is it? Where is the episode? That's what I want to know. I'm like, why didn't they ever put it out? It's about us. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. And I feel like we all are. But with that being said, that is the end of this WFAB reality show episode two. As you can see, this call, I feel like really just emphasized the move. It really talked about the move from, you know, Monet to iGenius. It really showed that they are playing the victim in it. They want people to believe that they did no wrong, that the only people who were wrong in this scenario is the people who critiqued them and the people who felt betrayed by their move. Um, when, in my opinion, if you watch the move at all, they said and did a lot of bad things to the people below them. So it's very weird to me that that's their reaction. But I feel like like at the beginning, at the beginning of talking about this reality show, I talked about the fact that I felt like this reality show was going to be all about them building up their reputation and them trying to show the other side. Like, hey, this is what y'all haven't seen, you know, with this move. And we're trying to build ourselves back up after the move because they were such, you know, they were so highly criticized after that move because of the things that they did during it. So I think that that's really like their main purpose for doing this reality show. So thank you guys so much, so much. Thank you guys so much for joining joining me in today's video. Now I have to go get ready for work. This week's going to be a crazy week. I'm back to uploading. Hopefully, hopefully I am taking all of the vitamins, doing everything I can to get my health back on track. With that, my birthday is also this week. So I'm really hoping that I get better before my birthday. And I just miss uploading. I miss y'all. I miss my community. I miss everything about it. I miss being on the loop when it comes to multiple marketing companies and what's going on. I definitely miss all of that. I miss my deep dives I miss I miss it all y'all so I just want to be back for good back to my uploading twice a week once a week on my vlog channel so I hope that I can continue that starting this week and hopefully I'm on the up and up when it comes to feeling better so with that being said don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video